Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Callum De Silva and I'm the president of the Sri Lanka and Australia Chamber of Commerce. It is my pleasure to be facilitating today's session on Sri Lanka and Australia bilateral trade opportunities. In fact, this is our fourth in a series of digital seminars we are hosting. As it is customary for us in Australia, let me acknowledge the traditional custodians of all the lands on which we gather today and pay respects to the elders past, present and emerging. In today's session, we'll be focusing on exporting to Australia, the key criteria to keep in mind. Australia is Sri Lanka's 10th largest export market. The overall trade between the two countries has had a healthy growth and between 2014 and 2019, this number has almost doubled. However, there is so much more that, we, that can be done to increase this number even further. And we are doing what we can to remind exporters in both countries that opportunities are plenty and to keep thinking about these two markets and about each other. That is what our panelists would cover today. We have a great lineup of panelists and they will be providing their own personal insights into these opportunities, as well as the do's and the don'ts when exporting to Australia. We are honored to have Mr. Kapila Fonseca, the Consul General of Sri Lanka to Victoria, South Australia and Tasmania, who is joining us to deliver the opening remarks. Then you'll be hearing from Ms. Jessica Sibley from the Australian Department of Agriculture, Water and the Environment followed by Mr. Indra Kirti from the Sri Lanka Export Development Board. You will also hear from Mr. Eddie Zhao from the Victoria Chamber of Commerce. But before I get into the interesting content, I want to ensure that we are all set up. So here are a few housekeeping items. Please use the Q&A icon to post any questions that you may have. We will try to group those questions into common themes so you can cover as that so that we can cover as many as possible during our panel Q&A session. You have all been automatically placed on mute. However, if you are experiencing any technical difficulties or need some help, please click on the chat icon and post your concerns and one of our capable technicians will reach out to you. Now, something that we cannot help you with is your internet connection. So if you are having issues with the internet connection and if we happen to lose you, don't worry. This session is being recorded and we'll upload the video and send you a link so you can enjoy this event at your convenience. I would like to now welcome those who are joining us on social media as well. Please share this digital seminar with your network. At this moment, I would like to acknowledge our ecosystem partner, Hatch. Hatch is a center of gravity for innovation and all things startup, a creative space for growth and collaboration in Colombo. So if you are just joining us, welcome again. We are about to get the show on the road. Obviously, we have a lot of interest getting more trade relationships between Sri Lanka and Australia. The Sri Lanka and Australia Chamber of Commerce was formed back in 2015 just for this very purpose. Since then, we have worked closely with both business communities and, and also uh, state and private organizations. Um, we have organized trade delegations, member events, and been instrumental in many other initiatives. Please visit our website, srilankaaustralia.com for more details. Sri Lanka is yet to reach full trade and investment potential with Australia, though it has been positive. As I said before, the trade numbers doubled between 2014 and 2019 from about 850 million to about 1.54 billion um, through this period. So with that, let me now welcome Mr. Kapila Fonseca to deliver the opening remarks. Kapila is a great one officer of the Sri Lanka Foreign Service and assumed duty as the third Consul General of Sri Lanka in Melbourne with jurisdiction over the states of Victoria, South Australia and Tasmania. He's had, a, he has, he's had postings previously in New Delhi, London and Berlin. While serving in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs Sri Lanka, Kapila served in the Economic Affairs Protocol, Public Communications, South Asia and SARC United Nations and Consular Divisions. Kapila, this is actually the second time you are joining us at one of our events. Welcome 
and over to you now to share your thoughts with us. Thank you, Kalum, for the kind in introduction. Uh, good uh, morning and good afternoon to you, all of you. Kalum, uh, Kalum De Silva, President of the Sri Lanka Australia Chamber of Commerce, uh, distinguished panelists, Director, Horticulture and Cut Flower Program of the Australian Department of Agriculture, Water and Environment, Jessica Sibley. Director, Trade Facilitation and Trade Information of the Export Development Board of Sri Lanka, SRP Indrakirti, and International Business Development Manager of the Victorian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Edi Sao. Distinguished participants, including as I'm aware, the Acting High Commissioner of Sri Lanka in Canberra, Senator Disanayaka, mm -hmm. and the Consul of the Consulate General of Sri Lanka in Sydney, Abdul Rahim. Ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed a great pleasure to deliver the opening remarks of this very important and timely webinar organized by the Sri Lanka Australia Chamber of Commerce. Thank you, Kalum and the team for putting this together. Thank you, the expert panelists, for joining us today. As I said, this is a very important and timely webinar for both of our countries, Sri Lanka and Australia. We are good all friends and traditionally friends in all spheres, be it bilateral or multilateral relations, be it trade, investment or tourism, or linkages in the research and education sectors, etc. Sri Lanka's social and cultural connections with Australia dates back to centuries. Currently, Australia is one of the few places where a large number of Sri Lankans live outside of Sri Lanka. In some places in Australia, you don't even feel that you are thousands of miles away from your home. There is such a strong presence of Sri Lankans, particularly in places like Melbourne, where I live, an abundance of Sri Lankan, authentic Sri Lankan cuisine, and many Sri Lankan temples, etc. However, when it comes to our bilateral trade, it's a diff different picture. Of course, we are long-standing trading partners. Of course, Sri Lanka's exports to Australia have seen a steady growth in the recent years. But our trade volumes are very low. By 2019, Australia was Sri Lanka's 13th export market, but with just 1.6% of Sri Lanka's total exports. When you compare with exports to Australia by other countries, again, our export volumes to Australia are in the lower ranks. For example, in 2019 to 2020, Merchandise exports from Australia, uh, Singapore to Australia are in Australian dollars 9,230 million. From Thailand, it was 14,552 million. Malaysia, it was 12,439 million. Export from Bangladesh was Australian dollars 1,045 uh, million. Vietnam, it was 400 million. Comparatively, Sri Lanka's exports with Australia in 2019 was just over 250 million Australian dollars. Clearly, we have not yet reached our potential. There are endless opportunities and immense untapped potential for growth. And I don't have to emphasize more of the importance of export growth in the economic growth of a country. I believe that exports should be one of our major pillars uh, growth in, in, the, in the growth of Sri Lanka's economy. There may be many reasons for our exports with Australia not growing fast enough. One particular reason that we are surely aware is the information and knowledge gap. Lack of knowledge about the Australian market and lack of awareness of the regulations that govern the Australian market, etc. This webinar is a result of that awareness, our awareness of the lack of awareness. 
our effort here is to open the doors to know the Australian market closely and correctly from the experts themselves in order to be a successful exporter to Australia. I'm sure the experts lined up with, will provide you the, uh, with valuable knowledge and insights and the small efforts of ours will pave the way for future trade growth between Sri Lanka and Australia. I wish you all a fruitful and useful webinar. Take care and stay safe. Thank you. Uh, Callum, we can't hear you. Sorry about that, Kapila. Um, that was really insightful and encouraging, Kapila. Um, we have uh, noticed that and we, we are aware of that um, gap and then we are doing everything possible, as I said, to get the awareness up and put the right parties together so that they can um, work together. So uh, uh, organizing, the reason behind organizing webinars such as these is exactly for that very reason. Again, thank you, Kapila. Thanks for the encouraging remarks. With that, uh, let me now um, go to um, Jessica. Jessica is the Director of Plant, Imports, uh, Plant Import Operations at the Australian Department of Agriculture, Water and the Environment. Jessica has worked for the Biosecurity Plant Division since 2007 in a variety of roles to assist Australia's plant export and import industries and in the management of plant biosecurity risk. Jessica's current role involves managing imports of horticulture and cut flower commodities into Australia, including implementing and managing import conditions and the provisions, provision of import permits by the Department of Agriculture, Water and the Environment Biosecurity Import Condition System. Now, Jessica, please share your insights with regards to exporting fresh produce to Australia. Now, before Jessica starts, uh, we've had a bit of a technical difficulty um, uh, getting Jessica to log in uh, through her computer. So she is joining us on her phone. So the slides will be, um, uh, will be operated um, by the, uh, the Secretariat. Thanks, Jessica, over to you. Thank you, Callum, and thank you uh, for inviting the department along today. Uh, we really recognise the importance of um, informing exporters of the regulations and import requirements. Um, from our point of view, it's to assist us in managing biosecurity risk and ensuring consignments can comply with all conditions uh, on importation into Australia. Um, so thank you very much for giving us that opportunity to talk through um, what we know on the fresh produce side uh, and some of the conditions and, and tricks of where to look to get further information about how to import into Australia uh, and how to prepare your consignments ready for export. So if you can go to next slide, please. Thank you. So today I'll very quickly touch on plant import operations, which is the area in which I work, just to give some context. Um, I'll talk about current fresh produce exports coming from Sri Lanka. I'll also talk about import conditions and where you can find import conditions on our uh, department website. I'll touch on what needs to happen with preparing an export um, coming from Sri Lanka prior to sending it to Australia. I'll also talk about uh, not only the commodity import requirements, but also the packaging um, and container requirements, which we term non-commodity import requirements that are very important to be aware of when sending product to Australia. Um, I'll also talk through some on arrival activities that your consignments will be subjected to, and then what happens if there is some non-compliance um, anywhere along that supply chain. So if you can go to next slide, thank you. Thank you. So just to quickly talk through plant import operations and the plant division in which I work within the Department of Agriculture, Water and the Environment. Our role is to turn uh, technical risk assessments of the type of biosecurity risks being pests um, of arthropod types and insects 
and also pathogens that may be present on um, imported fresh produce and turning those into import conditions within our import condition database, which is called BICON. So it's the Biosecurity Import Conditions System that is housed on the Department of Agriculture website. Uh, so we also conduct technical assessments for commodities uh, that have import permit requirements to ensure that um, all import permits and the conditions in place are appropriate to manage biosecurity risk. We monitor the compliance uh, of imports coming into Australia and we also undertake verification and assurance activities such as auditing offshore uh, to ensure that uh, we have the appropriate conditions in place and that the export countries can meet our requirements. In doing that, we also communicate with our overseas trading partners uh, and the plant protection organisations that are our counterparts. We do that via email, letter and bilateral uh, discussions uh, with our trading partners where required. Um, on arrival in Australia, we manage uh, consignment issues to ensure our border colleagues are able to make correct decisions on import requirements and whether consignments have met re import requirements. And we also implement a system which is called the Compliance Based Intervention Scheme, which is in place on a number of products coming from Sri Lanka. Uh, that is enables us to reduce our on arrival intervention uh, via reducing inspection due to ongoing high levels of compliance for particular importers. So that's just briefly what Plan Imports does. Uh, so now I'll touch on the next slide is just a very quick snapshot of some of the fresh produce. So fresh produce, just for everyone on the line, uh, is what we term horticulture. So it's the fresh fruit and fresh vegetables. So looking through our system in the last year or so, we can see uh, that coconut is the largest uh, export commodity coming through from Sri Lanka. There's also uh, various consignments coming of dehydrated banana. There's a number of other product types being mangoes, uh, papaya leaf, peas, melons, and then a number of semi-processed products that are currently being exported. So moving on to the next slide, thank you. Uh, I really wanted to touch on import conditions because this is where the journey starts for any exporter uh, seeking to export their goods from Sri Lanka to Australia. You need to go on to our biosecurity import condition system and ensure that there are import conditions in place for the product you wish to export. So there's quite simple search functionality within Bicon. You simply enter the search term of the commodity you wish to import. Um, if that doesn't yield a result, you can also try the scientific name and that will bring up the import conditions that are specific to Sri Lanka. Um, where you've found a relevant import case, you might find that an import permit is required depending on the, the product and class of goods. And there'll be an import permit apply now button at the bottom of the BICON case uh, that you do need to apply for uh, and ensure that an import permit is held by an Australian importer to be able to uh, import the goods into Australia. It's also important to understand while the department manages the biosecurity risk, we also manage imported food risk, which is relevant for uh, both the fresh and uh, the processed products that are coming in for consumption. Uh, so it's important to know the Fazant's import requirements and also check with Border Force um, to ensure that and other relevant agencies to ensure the products are not subject to additional um, import requirements. There are some conditions in place, not often for fresh produce, but for some of the nursery stock and seed commodities, they are considered um, endangered species being exported and they're actually subject to CITES requirements. Um, and Border Force have some restrictions on certain uh, certain products that are considered drugs within Australia. So do be aware of those import conditions. There will generally be a, uh, some text within the import case guiding you to check other sites for further conditions if that is relevant to that import case. So on to the next slide. The key thing to do with preparing a, a consignment for export is really 
ensure you understand the conditions and ensure the commodity is able to meet all of those export requirements uh, to be able to be imported into Australia. In Australia, it is the importer's responsibility uh, to liaise with uh, the National Plant Protection Office over in Sri Lanka to ensure that the certification and the treatments um, can be provided and are certified as required by Australia. So as an exporter, you'll play a crucial role in that, um, ensuring you're linked in with your importer in Australia and you're providing all relevant documentation that is required. So to export fresh produce from Sri Lanka, the goods must be commercially produced uh, and comply with the Australian import conditions that are listed on BICON. The Sri Lankan Department of Agriculture must certify the goods with a phytosanitary certificate. So it's important that you're aware of the Sri Lankan Department of Agriculture's requirements um, in obtaining an inspection and what is required to certify those products prior to export. The consignments must arrive in Australia with all accompanying and complete documents uh, to avoid any uh, delays while we seek further information. Uh, and as an exporter, uh, we do expect uh, for the benefit of you understanding uh, how well your commodity has been imported, whether there has been any issues on import, that you maintain a direct line of contact with your importers or the broker um, and understand what is happening with your imported goods and any issues that may arise. So importers in Australia must be Australian based. Um, to be able to apply for an import permit, you must be an Australian based uh, importer with a, a location registered within Australia. Um, some information to provide your importers uh, so that they understand our conditions is that it may be appropriate for them to engage with a customs broker to help them through that import process and ensure all documents are lodged that are required. There are a number of different systems in which the documents must be lodged and the highest priority one is going through our Australian Border Forces Integrated Cargo System. So that is where a broker working on your importer's end can really facilitate that, the import and ensure all the correct documentation is lodged. Um, I'll now move on to some of the non-commodity requirements for exports. If you can move the slide for me, please. Thank you. Uh, so it is important to be aware, while BICON lists all of the requirements for the, the product itself, so for the coconuts, what the coconuts are required to meet, there's also a range of packaging and container requirements um, we recognise in Australia there's um, potential for hitchhiker pests that come in the containers and the packaging. Uh, so we do have a number of requirements in that respect. So some tips for an exporter is to ensure that your container is free of contamination both inside and outside. Uh, and that includes soil, any grain, any insects or plant material that may have come from previous um, consignments being held within that container. We do require a cleanliness declaration um, for all containers that are imported into Australia to ensure that, that biosecurity risk has been appropriately managed. Uh, and as part of that cleanliness declaration, we also require a packing declaration that tells us um, the, the cleanliness of the container and also what sort of packaging material has been contained Within um, BICON, there is a link to packaging information and it does detail appropriate packaging types. And there is a number of packaging types that we do not accept uh, in Australia due to their risk of harbouring biosecurity risks. So please be aware of those requirements prior to export. Uh, straw in particular is prohibited. Um, any previously used fruit, vegetable or meat cartons uh, and secondhand bags and sacks are a number of things that are not permitted to be imported with uh, fresh produce. Uh, if it does get imported with those, delays may occur uh, and your consignment may be subjected to additional treatments to ensure any risk of those um, non-commodity containers is appropriately managed and you also, uh, your goods may be subjected to export or um, destroyed on arrival, depending on the risk. 
So I did just want to touch on as well, still on this page, um, just wanted to raise there's about to be some urgent action undertaken for a pest type called capra beetle. Capra beetle is a contaminant pest often found within um, containers um, and there's a number of phased actions occurring over the next year that will impact containerised goods coming from Sri Lanka as Sri Lanka is considered a host of capra beetle. Um, the me measures that will particularly impact on fresh produce is um, any fresh produce that's being exported with a container will require a, site, a phytosanitary certificate. Um, at this stage, there's no defined date when that requirement will come in place, but uh, do check our website uh, and the particular bike on case for each commodity will be updated uh, when that requirement is in place. So please be aware those conditions are coming into effect in the next uh, year or so. Uh, so on to the next slide, I thought I'd just touch on some of the on arrival activities while you're looking to export your goods. It's important to understand what will happen in Australia once the goods arrive. So our biosecurity officers will check the documentation that has been provided, particularly the phytosanitary certificate and any treatment documents that are accompanying the consignment and ensure that they uh, appropriately match the goods that have been imported um, details on the bill of lading uh, and other packing declarations. Uh, so we can have confidence that it is the correct consignment that have been imported. So again, very important that all those documentation is sent in a timely manner to your broker or importer in Australia so they can be lodged for the consignment. The documents must contain the specific consignment link uh, that verify our pre-export conditions have been met. So in particular, that phytosanitary certificate uh, and any details of um, packing numbers, lot numbers, et cetera, are some of the links that will be used to ensure it is the correct consignment. So a biosecurity officer in Australia will assess those documents and decide what the appropriate on arrival action is depending on their compliance. For fresh produce, uh, it'll generally be required to have an on arrival inspection. So it'll be directed to an approved arrangement site within Australia for an inspection to be booked by the importer or the broker. That inspection will involve the officers taking a sample of the consignment, generally 600 unit for fresh produce, that will be inspected and verified that it is free of pests of biosecurity concern for Australia and all other import requirements have been complied with. Where we detect issues on arrival, uh, that is where additional delays, um, treatments, export or destruction may occur. So it is important to understand that all imports will be checked to ensure uh, they've met our import requirements for fresh produce. So on to the final slide of what will happen if we, um, so it's more of the don'ts of <laughs> importing. Uh, so to ensure that you do comply with our conditions. Um, so you really do, again, I know I've harped on a, a few times, mentioned checking bike on and knowing what those import conditions are to ensure that your commodity is able to comply um, with all conditions for being exported. If the Sri Lankan, um, Department of Agriculture on their export inspection find a live pest of biosecurity concern on the goods, then the consignment is required to be uh, rejected in Sri Lanka and either required to undergo an approved treatment that will manage those goods or, um, or not be able to be sent to the Australian market. So again, ensuring you understand Sri Lanka's requirements from inspection is very important as well. So goods that arrive without the correct documentation, be it the import permit or the uh, packing declarations, et cetera, uh, may be exported or destroyed on arrival or uh, may be held while we seek further documentation from exporters or the Sri Lankan Department of Agriculture to confirm the commodities have complied with our conditions. So please ensure those documents are provided to ensure timely facilitation through the border. Any consignments with packing issues um, will be secured and held until we get that further information. And consignments that are found at our on arrival inspection to contain any pests 
diseases or risk materials such as trash, soil, sand, etc., will be treated if possible on arrival, generally for fresh produce that will involve a methyl bromide fumigation on arrival to ensure the pests are managed. Uh, in some cases, however, the pests cannot be appropriately managed on arrival. They may have disease symptoms or they may be a high risk pest such as fruit fly that uh, we cannot adequately um, treat on arrival without exposing us uh, the country to risk. And in those cases, they'll be exported or destroyed at the importer's expense to ensure that we only allow pest-free consignments to be released into Australia. So they're just some of the actions that may occur um, depending on the um, what the issue is that's detected on arrival. Where consignments are inspected um, and the documentation meets all requirements and there are no um, pests of biosecurity concern detected on arrival or other issues, the consignments will be released in a timely manner to enable uh, trade to occur within Australia. So that's all from my end. Sorry, I see there's a few things coming through, um, but I'll finish my finish my presentation there. Thank you, Colin. Thank you, Jessica, for that. Um, it's definitely useful, and then it's a lot of um, useful information. So thank you so much for that. And again, sorry about the technical difficulties you had to experience. Um, with that, let me now uh, invite our next panelist, um, that is um, Mr. Edi Zhao, from the, um, uh, who is the International Business Development Manager for the Victoria Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Um, Edi brings more than 20 years of international trade expertise to the Chamber, its customers and its clients. Eddie works closely with the senior executives and business owners across a wide range of industry sectors, including manufacturing, agribusiness, food and beverages, engineering, medical supply, healthcare, textile and clothing, building construction and tourism. And that's a lot of industries, Eddie, you're very experienced, no doubt. Eddie also facilitates inward and outbound investment activities for his international clients, matching investors with appropriate projects. Eddie, what are your thoughts now on how Sri Lankan exporters can engage with Australian customers and how a trade a chamber such as yours can work with them? Yeah, thanks, Callum. Uh, look, uh, I think it's, um, um, you look at, I put in there, um, I've been working with the Victorian Chamber for 15 years. Um, during those 15 years, I think um, my uh, personal experience for the global trade is about, it's not a rocket science. Um, so, so dealing with, regardless whether it's Australian customer or American customer or, or Asian customer, it's pretty much an extension of what you have been dealing with your domestic clients and customers. And um, of course, I think it's, um, there is some um, uh, technical issues that you need to address. And that's quite crucial for the business, like what Jessica has mentioned. So if you're looking at uh, exporting a, a fresh produce to Australia, then certainly these are specific market conditions that you need to comply with. However, um, I think the majority of uh, the cases uh, to run a successful business, particularly in the cross border, the important is to remember that um, it's going to be really about the relationship building and also the project management. I think these are the two areas um, where what probably is become a rule of thumb that you are engaging with any market, including Australia. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, um, you know, it's, it's just extension of your domestic business practice. However, um, trading with Australia, you know that uh, you probably don't really experience language uh, difficulties because um, you know in Australia you know everyone speaks English. However, there really will be a culture difference, uh, particularly the Australian business culture uh, that you need to understand. Then um, will you know increase your chances of being successful, uh, engage with the Australian customers. Um, it's very hard and, and it's really a broad area to talk about culture because, uh, every, you know, um, everyone have a uh, have different opinion. I, uh, I try to sort of summarize, um, you know, a, a broad um, Australian business culture into maybe four elements. Um, so just a touch base and uh, to give you a bit of a scheme of 
um, you know, what, what's the outlook for the culture and what you need to know when you actually engage with the Australian business. The first attribute I would like to say, the Australian culture is, um, is diverse. Um, is, um, you, know, you know that Australia is a multicultural uh, industry. And uh, so the, the, the country, uh, sorry, multicultural society. So the, um, you know, the you know, people from all over the world, the statistics I got is uh, like uh, 26 of all Australians uh, were born overseas. And 40, 46% of all Australians have a parent that was born overseas. And also 60% of Australian population growth um, is from immigration. And also 20% of Australian do not speak English at home. So as you see, it's a very diverse, uh, culturally diverse society. Um, so there will be a good chance that, that you come over uh, to do the business and uh, then they will be culturally either familiar with you or, or, or you're not familiar with. Uh, but the, the silver lining is, um, you know, the Australian business, co Australian business people are also familiar with this, so that this cross-cultural environment. So they're not very, uh, they understand your culture, they understand your background. So they have experience to dealing with people, uh, business counterparts from different cultures. So that's pretty much, it's a plus when you actually uh, engage with them. The other attributes I would like to say is Australian business culture is a fairly informal, uh, but uh, it's be respectful. Uh, when I'm talking about informal and everyone knows that Australia is pretty a laid back uh, culture, like people are you know, quite uh, informal. For example, you, uh, once you engage with them, uh, usually uh, they will address you with the first name. Um, so you don't have to say, uh, you know, the Mr. Smith, they can call him, call him John. Um, so it's very informal and they, they probably expect that you do the same. Um, so this is important. And sometimes you, you, uh, you are discussing business with Australian business people, you often see they can, uh, you know, crack some jokes to, uh, you know, to soften the, uh, the, the atmosphere. Or um, sometimes, you know, in, in certain occasions, you probably experience some colorful language which they use, which is quite common. Um, so, so don't really take it personally or uh, understand this is a part of the, you know, the, the business people you're dealing with. And uh, this is part of the culture that, that they, they feel uh, that you need to feel familiar with. And uh, also to, um, you know, look at, you know, how you're gonna build relationship with them. But I wanna say is, is, is also very, Australian is also very serious about their business. Uh, that means when you actually meet them, you do need to prepare your meeting. So if you have a meeting with your Australian uh, business counterpart, then, then you do need to put a lot of homework to prepare what you want to say. So, and um, usually the, 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 business, the, the appointment you need to make, um, you know, prior you meet them. So you can't just turn up and give them a few days notice. Usually you think uh, at the best practice to build, to set up appointment at least a week or two weeks uh, prior, uh, you know, your, your visit. And uh, so give people plenty of notice. And, um, and also um, to be punctuate. So it's, it's, a very, uh, it's very important in Australia that you could go with, your, you know, with your, the appointment time. So you may arrive maybe a few minutes earlier, but not too much earlier, but you certainly you don't want to be late. And uh, so this, this is very important. And, um, and also as you're dealing with business, uh, you know, your, your counterpart, then um, the, the deadline and also what you have promised to deliver is very important. So, any sort of uh, delays or any sort of, uh, you know, the tardy sort of kind of respond will be regarded as, you know, by the Australian business people as unprofessional. So this one is certain if you, um, you know, stick on the, the deadlines, stick on the, if you promise them, for example, look, my goods are gonna be delivered, uh, you know, on the 21st of, you know, this month, then, then, then try to, uh, you know, stick on that, 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 that timeline. Um, yeah, so the other thing is, um, you know, uh, gifts, um, you know, in, in some Asian countries and people, when you know, we like to give in the gifts. So it's, it's probably unnecessary in Australia, but it's always very nice to have if you have uh, some sort of symbolic about your country and show your appreciation. So that's, uh, it's pretty much up to the business uh, themselves. And uh, yeah, so the other cultural attribute is, uh, well, I can say the uh, modesty and the direct. Uh, so, you know, the Australian, people and, and including business people are, are moderate, very moderate. They don't want to, and the Australian hate like big notices. Uh, was a big notice that means they try to boost them up as like a puppet fish. So they are not that type of people. So that reflects when in the business dealing and the negotiations is that, um, you know, try not to be 
you know, emphasize on the importance of your business or, or, or self-important, even you are, you are, you know, the chairman of a very big corporation and still trying to, you know, in the pretty much in the, just dealing with, the, and the, you know, the, the matters and the business case. And also um, try not to oversell your companies or oversell your business because that can be regarded as, uh, you, know, um, you know, as a kind of, uh, um, the, the, the Austrian business people will put it off. So, so then just using the factual and, 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 and be friendly, you know, just, just, just talk to the point. Um, so so these this things are quite important. And also try to avoid very aggressive, uh, you know, the selling technique or, or, or kind of a sort of uh, pressure uh, selling technique, which is, you probably wouldn't, if you find that this kind of a tactics wouldn't work in Australia. And, um, and also Australian people, uh, business people are very straightforward. Unlike a lot of, uh, you know, the, if you're dealing with the Asian uh, countries, then, then people are always very indirect uh, because there's a high context culture. Well, in Australia, you're dealing with them and they're not uh, afraid of saying no directly to you. In certain way, that's probably easier because you actually have, uh, you don't have to guess what they mean. And uh, so you know whether, whether it's work or whether it's not. And um, so the, uh, the last attribute I would say that the, the Austrian business people value the honesty, uh, integrity, fairness, and uh, authenticity. So this is, um, this is a sort of uh, pretty much the value across the whole industry. Therefore, if you're looking at the develop your business relationship, then try to look at what are the win-win outcomes. The business is not something you advantage and the other one person lose. So try to extract the win-win outcomes. And also um, the relationship, uh, you know, the Australia is a fairly westernized uh, business, but doesn't mean that the relationship is discounted. So relationship is very important, particularly you do, you know, long-term business. But we also need to understand that relationship equals to the quality of the product and even quality of the service. So these are, you know, a, a foundation to build solid business relationship. So all this culture, I mean, as I said, it's like a common sense. You know, if you come across the country, you start to get it yourself. But then keep this in mind. Then when you're dealing with the Australian counterpart, they pretty much and all, uh, you know, obviously there is a you know a nuance on that. But again, you know, everyone you find they're probably very similar to this as a value uh, that I would just mention. So a few tips about when you actually engage with Australian clients. So um, your first one. I think you need to be appear to be professional, and uh, regardless of the company size, I think it's very important to do a a good uh, presentation about the company, about your product. For example, you need to have a, maybe a good website. You need to have a, a very well designed brochure, and also um, you know the product finish and the packaging. And uh, you need to meet meet sort of like the Western customers' expectations, and uh, so that means your customer will be more. Uh, you know, intend to actually uh, consider your product. And, and also, um, you know, remember that what you, the value is not like uh, how cheap the product is. You know, of course, you know, people looking at the sourcing for Sri Lanka, a part of the consideration is the price competitiveness. But it's also important that remember that the quality of the product is equally important because um, it will be lasting for Australian business people where they receive you know, the quality uh, product wouldn't meet their standard, then they have to incur more money to fix it. And, and also the, the time of delivery is very important. And um, so you, um, over here, you know, now we have these sort of uh, low, um, you know, inventories and all these business model. And uh, so any delays for the, um, for the uh, you know, the delivery, it could be quite, um, you know, detrimental for business uh, here. So that's why I try to stick on that and make sure that uh, you assess uh, what are the delivery time. And um, yeah, so the other one, it's good news is um, I found based on my experience, I found the Australian business people love import, you know, but try to surprise them, you know, try to offer, uh, you know, your innovative product to them. Um, and majority of Australian company have a very small, um, you know, the, um, the, the product development team. So if you have strong product development capabilities, just demonstrate to show them. I'm sure they will. They, they probably will be in their benefit to actually, uh, you know, engage um, with you in the further if you have these abilities. And um, and the the last one was just to grow with your clients. Um, Australia, unfortunately, is an affluent um, in market. Like everyone know about it. The people have high income. The consumer have a high income. But the, the population is no one near the large market like US and like other countries. So so sometimes uh, you could have them 
the, the vision or the vision to actually work with Australian companies, working with your business partner and grow the market with them and look at what the support they need and, and grow the market with them. And so in this way, you can grow your business and if your business partner grow. So another one is that just obviously it's very hard to do now. You've got to attend the trade shows and uh, you've got to do through the internet research and hard call is always uh, difficult. Uh, you know, the, the cold call is, is always difficult, but um, if you have those sort of, what I'm saying, you have all these tools of doing business and you actually, uh, you know, know that uh, who you're dealing with, then they will improve your chance of being successful. Um, so that's, that's my tip during these 10 minutes. Thank you. Thanks for those uh, helpful tips, Eddie. I'm certain these um, insights um, and your experience that you shared with uh, us today would uh, benefit many who are thinking of exporting to Australia. So we really appreciate that. And now we have our last speaker. Um, we have um, Indra Kirti, who is the Director of Trade, and Facilita uh, trade Facilitation and Trade Information at the Sri Lanka Export Development Board. They assist exporters to achieve trade efficiency in numerous ways, uh, including trade facilitation, resolving export related issues faced by exporters through by providing advisory services and so on. Now, um, most of our uh, participants today uh, know about the Sri Lanka Export Development Board, so I'm not going to go into details. Um, I believe um, the kid they had another web, another uh, meeting to attend, and uh, he's uh, joining us now. Uh, he's I think on the way back to his office or something like that. We really appreciate uh, you taking the time and joining us, Indra Kirti. So over to you. Uh, thank you very much, Kalum. Uh, I'm extremely apologize uh, uh, the 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 late uh, the joining with you, and uh, as you said, uh, there was another webinar I have attended and uh, uh, anyway it's a very it's a great, great pleasure to be with you all uh, uh, okay uh, let's start uh, the export into Australia and with our numerous experiences here and a number of uh, the requirements issues is a big story so uh, let me to share with you some uh, the, the important facts uh, about uh, the capabilities and what are the concerns uh, to be looking to uh, when we when we talk to, uh, or we are stepping towards uh, exporting to Australia. Okay, uh, 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 let's see and my next slide. Uh, do you know the the Sri Lanka uh, 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 that uh, the we generally we call this is just boasting about us and. Uh, uh, we are really the uh, everything. Uh, so we are capable of, you know, the, the doing tourism, exports, trades, and really we are uh, good, uh, the location, uh, good, uh, it's an opportunity to everybody. And we have to make use of that uh, uh, to reach Australia. That's what this beautiful slide. Okay, next slide, please. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, this is a general information uh, uh, about Sri Lanka. We just pass uh, uh, this as well. Yeah, next slide. And uh, as I said, yes, this is, uh, I think this from this point, no, yeah, this is okay. Uh, we are the, uh, Australia is the 10th largest uh, export destination to, to Sri Lanka. You can see, uh, uh, what our uh, export uh, the uh, uh, performance, average growth, annual growth is 5%. It's a good indicator. It's a good hope that uh, the Sri Lankan exporters uh, can see uh, positively uh, to reach Australia. And uh, Sri Lanka major exports to Australia, you can see uh, uh, the major products uh, that indicates that uh, uh, at the moment where we are, apparel and textile, coconut and coconut based products, rubber, engineering products, uh, non metallic mineral products, and food, food and beverage. One key thing, uh, there are some issues. Uh, we, 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 
we came across with our exporters uh, when they trying to export food items to australia and diamond at gym spices and essential again the same category uh, we have to be more concerned about uh, like food and beverage and fish and fisheries chemicals hard flowers etc next slide please yeah uh, okay uh, better to have the 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 uh, the uh, uh, the trade scenario that mean we we just uh, we have talked on this can we go to, to the next slide please this is this is uh, the 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 uh, products uh, potential products uh, we came across uh, when we studied the statistics we understood these are the potential products from sri lanka to australia and uh, what we have uh, done to study these uh, we have analyzed the australian imports from the world and sri lankan exports to the world we have observed there are some uh, products we export much to the other regions of the world but less in less to australia and we have on the other hand we have observed australia uh, imported some materials the 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 products but we are sending to other destinations so we thought that there there may be some gaps to be addressed there are uh, to fulfill fulfill those gaps that mean to divert the products or increase volumes to uh, of such products to australia mm, apparel rubber coconut engineering really we have seen some uh, the incremental growth of these items to the world but we understood that there is a potential uh, to send this uh, to australia uh, when we consider about the consumer base many of asians are there uh, they are tasty you, uh, you know the the our spices and all so there are some good uh, the uh, the points and concerns we have to look into okay next slide please and rubber products this is one of the key and you can see uh, uh, our strengths why we are talking about or boasting about the rubber we have high quality natural rubber in sri lanka is a world demand now we uh, the the high end markets not going for the cost but on quality uh, and we have the supply as well we have some brands uh, good brands you can see uh, tire brands and uh, uh what the what is the current situation and you know that pneumatic and solid tires those really the uh, when we analyze the market what we can see is this rubber boots shoe soles jerseys and so many rubber items the our our exporters or potential exporters can see those products and the future of course again these are the future we can see when we consider about the rubber rubber interior parts electrical and electronic parts bio material blood bags syringe all uh, the the medical devices under that mm. engineering goods and ele electrical and electronic goods even our uh, our concerns and our uh, focus on uh, electrical and electronic items under nes national export strategy is high so the potential and uh, 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 of this product is very high and high value added gloves natural rubber pillow mattresses those are the items that uh, we have to look in uh, to the to the products that we think uh, about uh, future growth next slide please
then this is again uh, disposable gloves sri lankan strengths you can see from in the in the in the left side leading manufacturer of medical gloves made there are number of bui companies they have high tech and high technology to achieve high quality uh, and uh, you can see the future features of our gloves uh, those are actually international compliances uh, to show the um, quality preparedness or preparedness of sri lanka to supply quality hmm? so uh, you can see other side the standards and certification uh, uh, I think we are having some technical so, difficulties again. They, Sorry, they are in, these, uh, in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. Uh, this trade. What about now? Yes, now we are fine. We lost you for a Can while. I... Uh, you are back now. Please continue. Okay. Can I continue from this end? No, you have to go back. No, no, no. You, you can start again. Uh, in the sense, not from the beginning. You can continue from where you were. Okay. What I said, the the Sri Lankan strength and uh, uh, to reach uh, the the uh, the high end markets the quality standards and certification we are capable of and existing companies and some bui companies they have that capability and they have installed uh, high technology and up to date technology to achieve that quality and compliances of the international markets. That's what this is to say that we are, that to show our strength. Okay. And the apparel, please go back. Yeah, apparel industry. Uh, again, uh, I, 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 I take the, the product by product, that means uh, based on the, uh, uh, the, the importance and the potential of so, such products to the Australian market. And uh, uh, you can see uh, the, the, our strengths, uh, uh, the history and the, the, promo, uh, the promote the concept, ethical working conditions, free of child labor, all, all, all those are inter, international compliances and we are complying. And uh, uh, we are a good uh, 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 flagship green destination, uh, top three apparel companies amongst the world, 50 most important suppliers. So those are our strengths. And these are the current products. Uh, Women's slips, suits, blouses and jackets, brassiers, t-shirts, men's suits, shirts and underpants. That is the list. Okay, you can see what it is. And the future, high-end gowns, gowns, dress, lingeries. Really, these are the, the future and the, our, our future readiness. So there is, there is a potential and there is an opportunity uh, to reach uh, the, the high-end markets by our exporters. Next slide, please. Some brands. Uh, this is uh, the, the spices. Anyway, these are the brands, apparel brands. Kalum, can I, can I hear? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, uh, I, I, I observed some dis disturbances. These are the, uh, the, the brands of brands from Sri Lanka, apparel brands. Uh, I think uh, uh, everybody can see and uh, un uh, identify uh, the oil brands that uh, originated here. Okay, uh, manufactured here, sorry. Next one, spices. Everyone is boasting. Sri Lanka is a, a, a good destination for spices, 
that is of course based on our high quality uh, uh, high quality and the uniqueness of spices i think we can sell it uh, is a good marketing point uh, uh, for the australian market uh, spices means pepper cloves nutmeg mace cardamom those have unique flavor and aroma and uh, good thing uh, for us to have our ceylon spice brand born in sri lanka so it is another tool we can use for developing uh, or reaching the international markets with uh, to say this is sri lankan product and the, with this brand we can promote this as unique high end product with the value addition and the true cinnamon so everyone knows the cassia is uh, everywhere uh, the there most of the 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 world uh, the countries in the world use uh, cassia as a as an alternative is like a, a, a substitution for the true cinnamon but uh, due to some health impacts and uh, the various uh, the factors the the sri lankan cinnamon can't stop because their uniqueness and its high quality and uh, 85% of world market share is ours our for our cinnamon and we have that uh, PO Ceylon Cinnamon Certification Mark Registration. Uh, uh, that is the custodian for both the, the EDB. And we are working, the EDB is also working towards uh, the promoting this with various projects under the, the division of the uh, export agriculture of the EDB. Yes, uh, this is one key point uh, and uh, key, uh, the product we have to be uh, we have to focus on to develop uh, because our uniqueness and brand uh, brands what that we can develop uh, and the high quality again we have to say the high quality of uh, uh, the product okay next slide please tea uh, ceylon tea i think uh, uh, we should not uh, 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 not uh, elaborate in, in depth, but we know uh, the tea, Ceylon tea is uh, again like uh, uh, high class, uh, that means uh, high quality uh, uh, parameters it has and it's uh, the flavor and uh, the Sri Lankan geographical uh, situation gives us more advantage uh, to market our tea to, tea, to promote our tea in the uh, world market. So uh, Sri Lanka Tea Board is the custodian uh, for, to promote this product, but the Export Development Board also, uh, we have focal point uh, for the uh, tea sector. Uh, this is also again, uh, our, there are some strengths our current situation and what we have to see in future. Wellness tea, healthy tea, uh, tea with herb or blends, uh, ready to drink, uh, tea, tea tablets. In the world, there are developers, such developments are there, but we have to step in towards with these new, new technologies and to achieve these value-added products. Conveniences. Another factor, the, the international, uh, that means uh, the consumer, the high-end consumer needs convenient products, like more than the black tea. And uh, we have to think about uh, ready to drink tea tablets, instant tea, it's something like this. So uh, again, this is uh, uh, the good product we have to uh, think in future. Next slide, please. Then the seafoods. Again, uh, Sri Lanka that uh, we, we, we are a good source because 
we have we, as an island uh, we have good opportunity and as a, as a, as a country in this scale can't you hear me we lost you again for a second i think you are back okay uh, and uh, we have a num big number of export companies uh 75 and the before eu approved fish process in established the key uh, government institutions, institutions to look after the sector uh, it will be as a pro the, the 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 regulator and the facilitator uh, department of fisheries there Uh, they have a mechanism of registration of uh, you know the, the some standards companies then the other our the, the famous for premium to, uh, the quality tuna and uh, sustainable fishing techniques uh, 100% vms licensed fishery vessels comply with all international regulations 19 fishery harbors year round fishing Uh, around the country social compliances so those are the, our strengths we we can go ahead with with those strengths to win the australian market as well uh, in rakiti we seem to have um, you can still have yellowfin lobsters Hello. Uh, I think um, we again lost you for a while, and um, can I can I see uh, can I can I can I explain this again? This slide. Um. Hello. Yes. I think we Give had me. the last bit. Um, um just we we miss we, we just uh, missed out on the last bit uh, indrakirti um other than that uh, we 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 heard the uh, what you mentioned before that uh, I, i think it's just a, a connection issue with where you are what about now i ah, am yeah, much better yeah uh, should i should i explain this uh, uh, slide uh, slide no i think um, we got uh, the gist of what you were saying there um indicated but uh, towards the end uh, you just faded out so maybe we'll continue with the next one yeah okay. no again we are having uh, difficulty uh next hearing slide, you please is it certified what about now hello uh, what about now can you hear me it's a bit better but um it's not very clear if that is the case uh, indrakiti what we would do is you know we could share these um, uh, slides um, with the participants um so that uh, they can get the, uh, the the gist of um, your presentation and then uh, we they can get in touch with you or with us um, for further information if that's okay with you okay what about now yeah it's a bit better okay what i said this organic uh, organic uh, certification of the organic product is the future and uh, world is moving towards organics and uh, everywhere every country every consumer look into this uh, 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 organic products because of the health issues and the environmental issues health, health means all human uh, human health and the environment health so both are uh, uh both can be covered with this organic certified products uh 
not only for the agriculture but many many products uh, could be certified as organic uh, okay i think frequently we are getting some uh, uh, troubles with connection hello what about now hello uh, it, it's it's fine now okay okay can we move to the next slide Uh, this just opportunities in Sri Lanka. What does that mean? We, our exporters should understand. Even outsiders, uh, we are talking always about uh, the opportunities to the outside. But for the local community, the local trading community, we have to strengths and our opportunities as well. So these are our opportunities in glance. Uh, so just we can, uh, if you share this with. Uh, uh, others but uh, uh, we have to uh, uh, concentrate on our uh, free trade that means trade agreements sometimes we call free trade anyway trade agreements mal, uh, that means bilateral and multilateral and uh, the, so on so uh, we have to understand those as well when we talk about the trading with other uh, country because those countries have their own uh, trade agreements with with our competitor countries so we have to think about that as well next slide yeah can we go to the next slide please preferential markets or australia sri lanka Trade and investment framework agreement. This is uh, one key thing to be concentrated on, and we have to understand fully this. And before going to the uh, going to establish any uh, even small businesses, we have to understand the contents uh, and everything, whatever uh, uh, stipulated in this agreement. I think this is helpful. So we have to concentrate on this as well. Next slide, please. The EDB uh, always as a facilitator. We are promoter, facilitator, monitor, knowledge provider, and policy maker. So uh, with these five pillars, EDB is helping. But here we uh, concentrate on the more on, on as a facilitator. So uh, let me to say. Uh, very very shortly sri lanka is a, we are the export promotion agency in sri lanka is a national organization we have extensive networking with sri lankan business chambers product associations and state authorities and we have close relationships with uh, international organizations trade facilitation organization trade promotion organizations and the, even the itc we work closely with sri lankan overseas missions uh, they are our uh, trade officers from Department of Commerce, and they also have very close link up with the EDB to facilitate and promote exporters and export traders. And export promotion, we have uh, the different export promotion programs overseas and all here, that mean local and overseas. Our market development, uh, the division is uh, the working more on this and with the uh, our product, uh, the sector that we have some sector specific divisions at the EDB for the agriculture and uh, for the industrial. So we all together, we, we, we all together with the, the, the internal and external uh, to facilitate export traders. And uh, one to one business meetings, we all arrange that for the uh, benefit of the export community as well as benefit of the, uh, the buyers. Uh, we always think that we boast about what we are doing for the local community, but this, these activities or promotional like are much more helpful to our buyers overseas uh, for bridging them uh, or linking them with our exporters. So, and we have detailed information on products, tariff and regulations, trade statistics, 
trade related information buyer searches and so many facilities we have and uh, i think everything uh, the, those informations and facilities can can be obtained online where 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 possible and uh, with this pandemic we have established uh, uh, not recently but a little uh, time ago uh, the help desk ex export a help desk now it is with uh, uh, the 15 uh, 14 focal points from different product specialists so you can contact directly by their email and their mobile numbers are there so anyone can uh, talk to them to get the information or whatever the details during this pandemic not only the pandemic whatever the information related to the trade yeah next slide please so thank you very much uh, and uh, uh, thank you very much uh, australian chamber for inviting us and thank you very much uh, again for our market development director and uh, uh, her officers for help been me to gather so many informations are uh, the key informations just to share with you and uh, uh, again uh, the, for the chamber uh, thank you very much uh, think you uh, capture some informations from this presentation and uh, and uh, again i am apologizing you for you know this uh, uh, i couldn't uh, come uh, a little late i came a little late and uh, uh, due to another program uh, and some disturbances uh, uh, due to this uh, 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 the connection anyway i think uh, is there any issue uh, i will give my contact details uh, i will share with you i think you have you can share with uh, anyone needs information and the, some facilitation works uh, of the edb uh, Thank you, Mr. Indrakirti. We will do that. We have, we will share all the slides um, with the participants and then we will, uh, now that you've given us your permission, we will uh, share your contact details as well. So thank you so much and uh, um, we appreciate you taking the time, um, you know, in the midst of uh, a busy day. So appreciate it. Um, in the interest of time, looking at the time, it's 5.18 or 18 past five here. So um, we, since we've gone over, what I would do is um, I, I've um, seen some questions uh, um, on the um, Q&A um, area. And then uh, Jessica, thank you for answering some of those questions. We really appreciate that. And any questions that haven't been answered just yet, we will uh, take them on board and then we will make sure that uh, we will come back to you with a response uh, to those questions and uh, comments you had. Um, just before I go, I would like to just leave one thing with you. You know, back in 2017, uh, we actually studied the apparel industry since uh, Indrakirti talked about that industry a lot. At the time, Australia was importing about 26 Australian dollars, 26 billion worth of apparel into Australia. And Sri Lanka at the time was exporting 4.1 billion US dollars worth of apparel out of Sri Lanka. But the amount of apparel coming to Australia from Sri Lanka was only 6 million, um, 26 million out of a total of uh, 26 billion. So you can see that sometimes maybe it's the tyranny of distance, maybe for whatever the reason, we don't think of Australia. So for the exporters who are with us today, I would say, Australia is a great place. Australia has so many opportunities. Um, let's explore these opportunities together. So um, we have the uh, consulate, uh, we have the consul general here. We have uh, members from the EDB, from the Department of Agriculture and then the Victorian Chamber of Commerce as well. So we will do everything possible to um, assist you. I, I saw there was a question as to uh, whether there is a platform to help uh, 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 potential exporters to um, 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 basically um, have relationships or kind of strike up relationships with Australian counterparts and so on. That is the very reason why uh, we are in existence. So we will definitely uh, do what we can. So with that, um, I'd like to um, bring this uh, session to a close. I would like to thank all our panelists once again, Kapila, Jessica, Indrakirti, and Eddie. Thank you very much. 
Also, thanks to our ecosystem partner Hatch, we appreciate their assistance as always. Um, I should also mention the uh, Sri Lankan Consulate in Melbourne and also in Sydney, as well as the High Commission in Canberra, the Australian Department of Agriculture, Water and the Environment, Sri Lanka Export Development, uh, Development Board, uh, a special mention to Apsara in addition to Mr. Indrakirti for um, working behind the scenes with us. We have, uh, and also to thank Victoria Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Ceylon Chamber of Commerce, and the National Chamber of Exporters in Sri Lanka. And a special mention to Mr. Anton Swan, who's the Honorary Consul for Sri Lanka in Queensland for putting me in touch with uh, Jessica's office. Um, thanks uh, for all the participants uh, for joining us today. Before you leave, please uh, make a note that uh, we are trying to organize our, we, we are planning to organize our next um, webinar towards the end of July. We will keep you posted uh, and uh, send you the link uh, with all the details in due course. Uh, please contact us for any help with doing business in between Sri Lanka and Australia. That is why we are here. And as our tagline goes, we are better together. And you can see our contact de details on the screen now. So um, we, uh, all of us who have joined both from Sri Lanka and Australia, uh, please stay safe, uh, take care of yourselves and all the very best with your plans. Uh, please be in touch with us. Thanks again and have a great day. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.